Ken Houston had one football scholarship offer out of high school, and he was a ninth-round draft pick when he left Prairie View A&M. He turned into one of the top safeties in the history of the NFL. And Pro Football Hall of Famer Ken Houston, one of the six safeties named to the NFL 100 all-time team, joins us now on BNC. Mr. Houston, we certainly appreciate your time. Uh, when you think back to having just that one scholarship offer out of high school in Lufkin, Texas, and you entered the league as a ninth-round pick, and then thrive the way that you did, what comes to mind for you? Well, you know, um, first of all, you couldn't tell me no, like you can tell no kid no. We, uh, we felt like even though we didn't have the chance or the opportunity, that uh, we could do it. And I didn't uh, have any, I wasn't an exception when I went to Prairie View. Ken Houston was a 12-time Pro Bowler, too shy of the all-time record, played 14 seasons in Houston and Washington, and in addition to being a Pro Football Hall of Famer, he is a Black College Football Hall of Famer. So, Ken, what do Prairie View, HBCU football, and the Black College Football Hall of Fame mean to you? It means a lot because that was our opportunity. And we had so many guys, we were overloaded with talent. We had a tremendous amount of talent. And uh, in the overload, a lot of guys got overlooked. Give you an example, I was an offensive center middle linebacker. And I was number five as an offensive center, you know, uh, chart in at number five. And five of us went on to play professional football at other positions. And I played with what I thought was some of the all-time greats. And even before I got there, that was that contingent of players that did not get the opportunity that could have made professional football. And we were just an example of what small black colleges could do. Wow. Well, you, you had uh, what many believe is the greatest tackle in the nearly 90-year history of Washington's franchise. Came on a Monday night at RFK Stadium in 1973 against the Dallas Cowboys, preventing a would-be game-winning touchdown when you stopped Walt Garrison on fourth and goal at the one in the final seconds. Where does that rank among your favorite memories from your football career? i tell you what, um, the way it has been played up over the years, uh, it was the most important uh, tackle of my career was the most important night of my career and i just got traded up from the uh houston oilers so it solidified my position with my teammates there and uh, you know after that it became easy and you know the league were different the afl was a faster league the nfl was a slower league so i had an opportunity to, uh, to do a lot of things but when it comes to ranking uh the things that i thought were the, the greatest I had two touchdowns by interceptions back to back against the San Diego Chargers here in Houston, and uh, nobody really knew anything about it. I have to go back and read it to make sure it was true. <laughs> <laughs> there, were, there were other things, you know, that I did, but it was just, it was commonplace against small black college Hall of Famers. I think one of the greatest players to me that ever lived was Otis Taylor, mm -hmm. and he's, he's a small black college Hall of Fame, but he's not in the NFL Hall of Fame. But you go to any college, any small black college, they had their share of stars and athletes. Yeah, I noticed Taylor, uh, a fellow Prairie View A&M Panther, if I'm not mistaken, uh, who was a star of Super Bowl IV for the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, so mm -hmm. you, you retired 40 years ago. Uh, give us an indication how your Hall of Fame career shaped who you are today. Well, it, it, it's everything. Uh, football has to be in its place. I had an opportunity to to graduate, I got a master's from Prairie View, and I was in the school system for like 20 something years as a counselor, I coached in pro ball. So it provided that opportunity. And the only, I'm, I'm 75, I, I think, 74, 75. But because I played in the NFL, this gives me an open door to go back and talk to younger players. I feel like God has given me a base uh, to tell not what I'm doing, but what I did. And I don't think that I'm in a different, matter of fact, I know that I'm not in different from any person that's out there. Football would just happen to be my profession and I've turned everything over to him. And he's given me this base like I'm here this morning. But to see guys like you get an opportunity uh, to do what you are doing, uh, it's because not my shoulders, but the people that were before us, so it, it, it's all aligned, and I set my place in line. Well, no question, and, and certainly uh, I know I speak on behalf of many in the profession. Uh, we certainly owe a debt of gratitude to yourself and 
uh, to many in your generation. So we appreciate that. And as the saying goes, uh, black don't crack. You look great for 75. So um, we, we, yes, sir. Well, uh, That's pretty good. That's yes, indeed. Young term. Yes, indeed. <laughs> well, you, you played 14 seasons in the league. Many others walk off the field uh, in need of major assistance uh, due to numerous health issues. Your fellow Hall of Famer Mike Ditka is the chairman of Gridiron Greats, which helps those former players in need of physical and mental assistance. Uh, tell us more about the, the Gridiron Greats Assistance Fund. Well, first of all, you can't give enough things to Mike Ditka. And uh, most people think because a person played professional football, uh, they've had it made or they have it made. But one thing for sure, if you've been a professional football player, you are going to have a second career. And you're going to have it pretty early. And a lot of times you are not prepared or you might, might not be as prepared as you would like to be. And so you go to a guy like Mike, uh, it's a lot of pride that goes along with football. And a player, uh, you know, he had never asked, had to ask for anything in his life. All of a sudden he's without finance and nobody's backing him anymore. Because once you leave the game and you know the story, you become an ex. And you're kind of the only person that remembers yourself, you know. I sit around there some time and think, you know, you did that, and that was great. And then I run across somebody and go, and what did you say your name was? You know. <laughs> and so it's an opportunity to go back and help people. And it, it's just, a, to me, the way it should be. It's, it's not about what you did or who you did or who I was. My name is Kenneth Houston. That's who I was. That's who I am. And I happened to do some things that were different. I happened to, again, think in the small black colleges, they happened to prepare me for life. And that's what I'm doing right now because none of this has been about me. I've learned to move on. Like I said, I've been in the hall now almost 32 or 33 years. And uh, I had an opportunity to study the people before me. And I realized where they were and where I would be. And this is where I am very quickly. Uh, I've had two bouts with cancer. As a matter of fact, I'm, I had chemo last week on the uh, second cancer as I was getting out of the hospital for the first cancer. And I was in the hospital three and a half months. <clears throat> and as a player, you know, that never happened to me. I went from 240 pounds down to 163, couldn't walk. Uh, only God has me here. And so he helped recreate my purpose. And so uh, I tell my story is when I got ready to leave this earth and I thought I was there, I only had one doll in my hand, so nothing else I had accumulated mattered. Hmm. And so if, if we get a chance to be with each other or do for each other or take this day to help each other, that's what it's all about. Of course, you are uh, friends with a number of, of Hall of Famers and other former players. Um, you detailed your battle uh, there with, with two bouts of cancer, and we certainly wish you the very best. How hard has it been uh, for some of those former friends and, and, and players that you know? Well, you know, the only, only players you know, I, I don't know how many thousands it's been, but the only players that you know is, are some guys that made it big. Now, when I say you know, I'm talking about that the world continues to recognize because they're given opportunities like I'm on this program this morning. And uh, so there are thousands of players uh, who didn't make the money, who didn't prepare themselves for what uh, being something other than a football player. And you are not a football player, you're that individual. Uh, you happen to have, you, you have a job. I respond and, and really appreciate you doing what you're doing because I get a chance to identify with you. You know, you own and you, you know the history of the game and you might people that, uh, but everybody has the same story. Nobody's different. Everybody has the same story, and that story is your story. You know, my story of being a Hall of Famer and uh, all 100 teams, the doctors allowed me to leave the hospital and go to the Super Bowl, and I was just, for all practical purposes, never gonna leave the hospital again. But that's the, the direction that God had on my life, and that's the direction that I'm here this morning is because there were other purposes. And so there are other purposes in life for other people. Well, part of the way that people can help uh, Gridiron Greats is, is through Pork Rind Appreciation Day. Tell us why it is being celebrated, uh, especially in this unusual season. Well, i tell you what, um, Pork Rind Appreciation Day is the greatest day in football. It's a Super Bowl. And years ago, small batch, uh, these guys came up with the idea 
on these pork rinds. And I grew up on pork rinds, but we're a different kind. We call it hog killing time. We did it this time of year. And we had a different pork rind. And as you get older, that kind of get out, not so much as get out of your system, but you forget about what it is. Well, pork rind appreciation day, first of all, you can go to pork rind appreciation day, or pork rind.com, and you can just register and t have an opportunity to win $5,000. But in the meantime, if you go there and you order this pork rind, uh, or you go to the store and you get this pork rind, it's really something new. And you know, like it, I'm thinking, pork rind, you know, like, oh yeah, I know about pork rind. But I had an opportunity to go to a factory down in Atlanta and to appreciate what they are doing as to how they made the pork rind healthy and all these things, all the different brands, or, all the different labels, not so much labels, but all the different tastes they put it under. And it's something that's really good. So um, Southern Recipe Small Batch came up with this idea. And it is a big thing. And I'm not just saying it to be on that side or whatever. I'm saying it because it's a good product. So if you get an opportunity, go to porkrind.com. And they celebrate the Super Bowl at Pork Rind Appreciation Day. And it's really something that's gone over big. All right, as Mr. Houston said, uh, to learn more about Pork Rind Appreciation Day, go to porkrinds.com. And to learn more about the Gridiron Greats Assistance Fund, go to gridirongreats.org. Pro Football, Black College Football Hall of Famer, Ken Houston, we appreciate your time. Please stay safe, and thanks for joining us here on the Black News Channel. Hey, look, guys, thank you for what you're doing. We appreciate what you're doing, and uh, it, it's all good. So thank you, and have a great day and a great life. Thank you, sir. You as well. Thank you.